Skinner just turned 21. Skinner's the old guy and he's 21, you know, it's kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, they come and ask for advice. They, uh, you know, I think, you know, we, we're not really, uh, we're more kind of competitors and, and peers more than, you know, I, I don't think they look at me as the older guy, you know what I mean? I think it's more we're all friends and, you know, even though I'm older, um, they've been, you know, especially Sean, um, you know, Kyle maybe a little bit more because he's, he's younger, he's only been pro for a year, but the other guys I've raced against them for a couple years now, and, uh, you know, I think we look at each other as, you know, the same guy, just, you know, I'm obviously older, but I don't think we, you know, when it comes down to it, I don't really think that they think of me like that, and I definitely don't think of them as younger, you know, up and coming guys, I just think as, you know, guys I race with and teammates. Yeah, they're on the same level as you, I mean, they're on yeah, the same team. Yeah, no, exactly, I mean, it's... You know, at a, when the gate drops and everybody's on the track, the age doesn't matter anymore. You know, the lights team is awesome. I, I mean, it's <laughs> definitely added a lot more to, especially Forest Plate for the, you know, preseason. Anyways, but uh, I mean, talking to him about it, and you know, sure, there's a lot more work, but I think in the long run, definitely things will pay off. It's gonna be tough for him with the two rigs. Um, it's not like he just, all right, I'm gonna add a lights team, and just he could have easily just put it under this semi it's two more guys and it's east west so it's not really any more guys than we had last year because we dropped one 450 guy and one of our other 450 guys actually went to the lights rig so it wouldn't have been much more but he he just went big he wanted what's best for the team in the long run he went, he got two semis but you know at the same time for him that's a lot of work just all right now it's not two semis now we need two drivers we need this paying for two trucks for gas, getting two trucks wrapped, trying to get sponsors to do two teams. It's just a lot more for him to get get ready for this season. It's just a, it's a lot of work when you're trying to do everything at once like this. When we go to the races, you got to remember that you drop two riders. That's that's a big thing right there. But it's better to rush now and keep doing it all because. When we get to when we get to that point, then it's almost like you took a lot of pressure off, and it's easier, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, Dan said, you know, it'd be really cool for us if we did two teams. <laughs> no, I think he wanted to do it, and then people were like, he'll, he's never gonna be able to do that. Who said they, that? No, people were just saying that. Force like, no, I gotta do it. Now I just gotta do it. I don't I care know, how much more work it is. That's what happened. I can't fail. I'm not a failure. <laughs> for all you haters out there, that's what happened. <laughs> Gee, that is what happened. It was just an, it was just bullshit <laughs> talk at the beginning. But then yeah. people said I couldn't do it. He was drunk. He's like, We're gonna and then the, the whole team, and then the whole team took it personally. While the lights team and most of its riders are fairly new, there is a veteran contingent of riders in the 450 class. Jason Thomas has been on the BBMX team for the past two years and has a long-standing relationship with the Butler family. The thing I probably like the most is that I was pro I was friends with everybody before I even got on the team. I mean, I knew everyone. I'd raced with everyone, and and I'd lived with you know, the Butlers before I even got on the team. So it was such an easy transition. Brian Johnson came out of the amateur ranks at 16, but injuries have prevented what some called his eventual rise to the top of the premier class. Really focused everything on the Supercross season. I had a few really good races last year. I got a seventh in Atlanta right behind all the top guys. You know, everybody was there, Ricky, Reed, Stewart. I know I have a speed and I just got to get um, training really hard and We've worked on, we're working on some things in the gym, getting me bigger and putting some weight on just so uh, that 450 is a big bite. Rounding out the 450 team is Brandon Butler, younger brother of Forrest and Karsten. He has been with the team since its inception. I, I say I, I race professional motocross and they say motocross. I like motorcycles. I, I race motorcycles for a living. I say, oh, street bikes? I'm like, no, dirt bikes. They're like, oh, you do, you do the flippy things on, on the X Games? And, no, that's freestyle. Oh, yeah, that's, not, that's dirt bikes. Yeah, but that's freestyle. It's, that's a competition. It's like judge off tricks. I race. I, I do the races. Oh, I think I've seen that's when you go all the little hills. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> we have such a, a wide variety of the way we work with each and every sponsor that it's like you're dabbling in 20 different businesses, you know? Like with DNA, you're doing all the energy drink stuff, and you're dealing with their investors to stock stuff to back and forth to marketing to sports to you know and then with BTO we're constantly working with all the sponsors to structure you know different methods of making money and advertising with BTO so instead of just just working on sponsor stuff I think that's why it's so spread out time wise so it's not just a matter of you convincing sponsor X to give you a check so they can put your name we don't ever do that 
on the bike. There's other things. Yeah, that's where we're different. I, we we run literally like an advertising or marketing firm, and the fact that uh, we don't just want the money for this year. We need the money for next year and five years from now, and we want it ten years from now. So, as soon as we when we're negotiating a deal, we're already trying to put together how we're really going to help them profit and not just profit back what they're putting in. You know, we work on making them. Uh, basically three to four to five times what they're putting in because that's what makes it more attractive. <coughs> hey, what have I told you about going over here, buddy? One of our reps on the West Coast grew up with Forrest, and he's an action sports rep. He used to ride, I think, semi-pro motocross, and he was kind of telling us about the team, and I was looking for a, a bigger avenue to get our, our name out there. He had set up an appointment with us at um, Cracker Barrel, and I never met him, didn't know how old he was, didn't know anything about him, and, you know, he kind of explained where he was, fighting the big guys, constant challenges going up against these bigger teams and them spending the money to go out and hire the top dogs and things of this nature. And it kind of reminded me of what we were up against. So right away I kind of saw a lot of parallels there. He told me he was Miami-based. We started talking about, you know, the team, the coverage, the exposure. And then I kind of told him about our vision as a company, about building a brand, aligning ourselves with a team like the Butlers and kind of growing together. And I think really it was more about the two of us understanding the positions that both were in, the underdog going against the big guy, seeing a vision, a long-term goal, and then kind of partnering up and then trying to get there together. I was, with the, I was with the team last year, I was with the team the year before. The year before, when it all first started out, he was kind of, he didn't, he was, you know, just starting out in this industry. And, um, you know, he, he already had the semi, he didn't have the sponsors, he didn't have um, the right gear companies, the right, you know, just the right people behind him. So I walked into a meeting with Forrest, I decided in 20 minutes and said, let's do it. And from there, we've just been, uh, we've been friends, teammates, um, uh, partners, and whatever he needs, he, uh, he helps me out, I help him out. Well, I mean, really our job is just to represent them and to try to, you know, portray their products in a, the most positive light we can and, and you know, use our, the avenues that we have, whether it's television or, or magazines or uh, any kind of interviews, anything where we can you know, get their name out there. I mean, that's why they're, you know, they're helping us to um, you know, spread their name and to promote their products. And, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but you guys are like moving billboards. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we are there, uh, you know, they're, they're basically paying to have their name painted on us and then we're trying to show that to the masses. You know? so it's almost like a subconscious thing where they come over and they're checking out the bikes and checking out everything, but when they see all the stuff on their bikes, you know, the little kids are like, oh, that stuff's cool, and then it turns into, well, uh, when they go to, go to a store, they, you know, rec they put two and two together with our product and that product, and they're like, oh, let's, you know, let's pick that. People don't realize that we pay, you know, anything that comes, anything our riders get finance-wise is through, of our, through our team. Guys, I'm guys on Honda, you know, that, that salary is paid by Honda, so all of our money has to come from our sponsors. I think a lot of people still think that you're just supposed to pay me this to put the name on the trailer, that, and that's, that's too easy. You can't do that. You know, no one's going to put their name on anything. I mean, you'll get people to do it, but even if you get them to do it for a year, then they're going to bail on you, so what's the point? So really all we do is we really just operate like a true advertising or marketing business. They're... We don't look at it as they're sponsoring the team. They're advertising with us. You know, the same as if we were a magazine. We got to outperform everybody else advertising-wise to make it feasible for them to stay with us. Everything is, is, is funded through what force goes out and, and gets. It's not, there's no, you know, we're not, we have American Honda support on bikes. Uh, they don't give us support on parts. Everything is gone after by force. I mean, he goes out, he gets the sponsors, he puts the packages together for the sponsors. I think that's, you know, we had talked earlier about the stress levels that he goes through. A big part of force is he wants to please everybody. And, he, and he's very good at it. He's very good at understanding the marketing side of the business. Well, when we, we actually, this was the first year that we've had the most applications we've ever had in the Bellray history. And, um, you know, what Bellray is trying to do right now is get back into the racing, t and the racing scene. So we were really looking for a team in Supercross that could do that for us, you know, that had visibility, but was still down to earth. Because a lot of times what you find with these teams is, 
you know, they're celebrities, it's hard to communicate with them, it's hard to work with them. And, you know, really it was like we had this discussion with Forrest and on the first day we just got along great. You know, we could tell that he was really into Belray, that he believed in Belray, that he was willing to promote us, to work with us. And, you know, it proved to be true. We just walked in, first thing, he comes right up to us, starts talking to us, what can we do, you know, to help you, what do you want to do? And, you know, we were just really looking for a partnership and I think that's what we found with Butler. You know, traditionally you just had the four factories and now as teams like ours grow, I think eventually what you'll see over the next number of years will be just like you see in NASCAR. You know, if you have uh, Hendrix Racing, per, per se, would be like the Butler Brothers part of it. That's just who owns the team and, and runs the team. And then, uh, who is it? I think Jimmy Johnson drives a Lowe's car, you know? Lowe's is a title sponsor and their car manufacturer is Chevy. But it's not the Chevrolet team, it's the Lowe's team. And Chevrolet is the factory that backs that team. And eventually I think that's what you'll see all of our stuff turn into because the factories can still put everything they're putting into their factory team, product-wise, testing-wise, you know, their whole factory effort, but they can cut out all the race expense part of it. You know, they don't have to pay the salaries of the technicians or the mechanics, the drivers, the riders, all that kind of stuff because the team starts paying all those bills. They could probably put more into it technically-wise, you know, bikes mechanically, but they can uh, save money on the back end. I think that's eventually what you'll see with us. So.